Hello, math students. It's Mrs. Marcellus and my friend, Forcott. In this lesson, we're going to write and solve addition equations. Today's learning objective, students will write and solve addition equations by creating models, applying the subtraction property of equality, and using standard algorithms. Today's vocabulary. When solving equations, we often solve by using inverse operations. Inverse operations are operations that are the opposite of or undo each other. Some examples of inverse operations are addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. Today we'll be using the subtraction property of equality. It says if you subtract the same number from both sides of an equation, the sides will remain equal. And this is used to solve addition equations. What do you think, Fercott? Are you ready to try some? Then let's go to our first example. When solving equations, you can think of yourself as a detective. You are on a mission. You want to find the variable and then isolate it. You want to get it all alone and find out what it's worth. When solving an equation, we also have to make sure we maintain a balance. Throughout the process of solving the equation, we have to make sure that both sides remain equal to each other. This equation may be easy to solve in your head. However, we are focusing on the process or the algorithm for solving equations. To solve the equation, we're going to apply the subtraction property of equality. The first step in solving any equation is to find the variable. That is the side of the equation that you start with. Then you need to isolate the variable. You want to remove anything that is on that side of the equation so that we get the variable all alone. Since we have x plus 8, we need to get rid of the plus 8. In order to do that, we will subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. We would write that as minus 8 on both sides. Plus 8 and minus 8 will cancel out and become 0. This leaves us with x on one side of the equation. On the other side of the equation, we have 15 minus 8, which equals 7. You always want to go back and check your solution to make sure it is in fact true. We do this by plugging it back in for the variable in the original equation. We would write 7 plus 8 equals 15, and since that is true, we know that we have found the correct solution. Sometimes students like to write what I call railroad tracks in order to keep everything lined up and keep the equation broken into two pieces. Let's try another example. Let's find the solution to c plus 4 and 3 tenths equals 19 and 5 tenths. First we find the variable, then we will isolate the variable by subtracting 4.3 from both sides. Remember, when we add or subtract decimals, we need to line up the decimals. Plus 4.3 and minus 4.3 equals 0, leaving us with just c, and we have c equals 15.2. Then we need to go back and make sure our solution is correct, so we will add 15.2 plus 4.3 and we get 19.5, so C equals 15.2 is correct. Next, let's try this equation with fractions. We locate the variable, which is on the right side of the equal sign. In order to isolate D, we will need to subtract 2 ninths from both sides of the equation. 7 ninths minus 2 ninths is 5 ninths. And on the right side of the equation, the plus 2 ninths and minus 2 ninths will cancel out, they'll equal 0, so 5 ninths is equal to d. Then we can go ahead and plug that back in, and we can see that 5 ninths plus 2 ninths does in fact equal 7 ninths, so we know we have found the correct solution. Let's try solving some word problems. In these word problems, we will write and solve an addition equation. The addition tells us that we'll have a plus sign, and the equation tells us we'll have an equal sign. If you want, you can go ahead and set that part up first. 
It takes 43 facial muscles to frown. This is 26 more muscles than it takes to smile. Just how many muscles does it take to smile? Let's set up our equation. It takes 43 muscles to frown. This is the largest value. That's the total number of muscles. This is 26 more than it takes to smile. So we have a smile plus 26 muscles to equal a frown. Now that we have our equation established, we can solve. We want to isolate the s, so we will subtract 26 from both sides of the equation. On the left, the plus 26 and subtract 26 cancel each other out, leaving us with just s. On the right, we end up with 17. It takes only 17 muscles to smile. Of course, you can check your answer by plugging it in. We would add 17 plus 26 and confirm that it does in fact equal 43, so we know this is correct. Stewie, a six-year-old feline from Reno, Nevada, measures 48 and 5 tenths inches long and is the certified longest cat in the world. This is 34 inches longer than Furcat. How long is Furcat? We're setting up an addition equation, so we know that we'll have a plus sign and an equal sign. The longest cat in the world is a lot longer than Furcat. We know that we have Furcat plus 34 more inches in order to equal the length of Stewie. Then we need to isolate the variable f. In order to do that, we will need to subtract 34 from both sides of the equation. And when subtracting decimals, we have to remember to line them up. We can always add a zero to keep everything nice and neat. On the left side, we're left with our variable f. And on the right side, we have 14.5. For cot is 14.5 inches long. We can always check our answer by adding 34 plus 14.5 and confirming that it does in fact equal 48.5. Well, forgot what's wrong. Are you feeling short? Aw, don't feel so bad. I'm short too. I'm shorter than most humans and definitely a lot shorter than the world's tallest human. What's that? We should go have some milk and cookies to make ourselves feel better? I think that's a good plan. So we're signing off for now.